Today, we're going to show you how a seemingly inconspicuous device, like this USB charger here, can track you over Wi Fi. If you've ever wondered if you're being watched, a device as small and inconspicuous as this USB wall charger could be the device that's watching you over Wi Fi using a small implant like this ESP8266. The ESP bug is a project I developed that detects whether or not Wi-Fi devices are within proximity of a certain range, and an attacker could potentially use this to detect whether or not certain people are nearby. When placed in a home or in the office, the ESP bug can be used to discern the presence of people or devices based off their MAC address through a remote web interface I developed. If you want to follow along, all you're going to need is an ESP8266 and a USB cable like this one that has data. Once you have these things, we can get started. You can start by heading over to my GitHub at github.com slash alexlin slash ESPbug, where you can find the source code for this project. I'm going to start by cloning this repository in my terminal, which I am running Ubuntu on. So if you don't have a Linux computer, you can also use a single board computer like the Raspberry Pi or some other device that's able to run Linux if you want to follow along with this tutorial. So I'm going to start by running sudo git, oh wait, I don't need sudo for that. I'm going to run git clone HTTPs github.com slash alexlind slash ESPbug, which will basically just clone this repository to a local place on my computer so we can run the code. So I'm just going to run that. And here you can see I actually already have the source code installed because I wrote it. So I can see that it's already on my computer. I'm going to run cd esp-bug which will put me into the directory where you can find the files. And yes, I can see that everything is here. I'm going to head back to the GitHub page where you can find some of the installation instructions for this project below, and we're just going to start running through them. So first, I'm going to do a few prerequisite updates. So just going to run sudo apps update. And let's see if that goes through. Yes. And then sudo apt upgrade, which should fix my dependencies. Okay, so everything is good on the dependency side. So next, I can go ahead and install the server that's going to be running our code, and also PHP, which is going to be handling all the backend for our files. So another thing I want to point out is we're going to be locally hosting this server. But another alternative, if, say, you're actually remotely implanting this, you're going to want to use a web hosting service. Um, there's a few good ones out there, like 000 web host, which is completely free web hosting. Um, that requires a little bit of configuration, but there's tons of online tutorials you could follow if you wanted to get this set up. So I'm going to complete following through with locally installing um, the ESP bug. The next thing you're going to want to do is install Nginx, which is going to be the server powering our code. So I'm going to run sudo apt install nginx. And here we can see I also have this installed on my computer already. So you'll probably get a different output than this. Next, we can move on to installing PHP, which I can copy from this line. So after I've run that, you can see I also already have this installed. Another thing you will want to note is which version of PHP you have. So we can have Nginx communicate in between with this program. So you can also check that by running php tag v. And you can see here we're running 7.4, which is important to note. So if I head back over to the GitHub page, the next thing we're going to want to do is to edit the default configuration file that comes with Nginx. So this can be found at this directory here, slash etc, slash Nginx under sites available. So running this line will pop us into a text editor, which will allow me to edit the default configuration file and just plug in some information that's tailored specifically to your device. So after I run this, it's going to pop me into Nano, which is a text editor. So I'm just going to go ahead and scroll down here using my arrow key up to the first line that you will need to edit. So here you can see in my default file, I have the root address set to slash home slash Alex slash ESP bug. But this is probably going to be different for you. So you will need to change that. Also, if your default file does not look like this under 
the nginx sites available directory, you can just copy and paste this into a new default file under that address. And if you wanted to do that, you can just go into you can do cd slash etc slash nginx slash sites available. And you can just run sudo nano defaults. Plug in your sudo password and it'll throw you into a new file. But here you can see I already have one, so that's not the case for me. Okay, so coming back over here to your configuration file, you're gonna to wanna to scroll down towards this root and you're gonna to wanna to change this to the address where you've cloned the GitHub repository. So on my local computer, if you remember, we cloned it over here to ESPbug and it's under my, so I can actually go back here. So if you wanna find where that file is actually stored, it'll be under slash, you can do ls. And home is where you can find a list of your users. So cd home. And if you just run ls, it shows you um, which user it is that is currently gonna be running this. So if I head back over to the configuration file, all you would have to do is just plug that directory into this line. So slash home slash your username here, and then the name of the repository, which is ESPbug. And then just another slash at the end so it knows that it's looking in a directory. Another important line for the configuration is this one here. And here you can see we've added index.php amidst it so that it knows to look for PHP files. And another thing you're gonna want to note is also the version of PHP that you're running. So if you're running a newer or older version of PHP, you can just put the version you're running in here, which we pulled earlier from that PHP tech version commit. So once you have everything tailored to your settings, you can just hit Control O to output and Nano, hit Enter, and then Control X, and that'll take you out of the file. All right, and the final thing we're gonna want to do is to get our server up and running. So we're going to reload the Nginx service with sudo service nginx reload. Okay, and everything should be good. So I can just head over to a web browser now, since this is a web app and we can access it through here. I'm gonna open a new tab and type in localhost here, which is where it should be serving our website. So here you can see that it actually shows it as forbidden, but that's because I forgot to complete the directory where the files are stored at. So if we go back to where the ESP bug is stored and run LS, this shows us what folders are underneath it. Here you can see we have bug, we have image and the web directory. And since right now localhost is pointed towards just this directory in our configuration file, we'll need to be a little more specific. So I'm gonna do slash web here and that pulls up the interface. You can see that there's already a few devices that are cached on the website, even though we haven't set up our ESP8266 yet. That's because since the server is storing data in such a volatile way, I had it cache the devices to a locally saved file, which it pulled up beforehand. So now we're gonna get the ESP8266 actually up and running so that we can get a live stream of data. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect the ESP8266 to my computer. And I'm going to pop open an instance of the Arduino IDE. If you don't already have this program installed, it is going to be the programming interface that we're using to communicate with the ESP chip. And if you don't have it installed, you can just head over to arduino.cc and head over to their download page if you want to grab a copy of the software. So heading back to the IDE, I'm going to want to just open the source code for the ESP bug. So I'm going to head over. Okay, so you can see we're already in the directory ESP bug. I'm going to head over to bug and we're gonna open this file bug.ino. And here you can find all the source code for this wonderful little chip. And basically what it's gonna be doing is connecting to your Wi-Fi network and pushing the data out that it finds over to this server name address here. So there's also a few things you're gonna to need to configure with this file before we get it started. So the three parameters you're gonna to wanna to edit are your network. So here I have plugged in my network name you're going to want to put your password here between the quotes. And then finally, the server name where it's pointed towards. 
since I'm locally hosting this project, I'm able to direct it at a local IP address, which you can find just by running if config in your terminal. So my address is at 192.168.1.89, which matches up with what I have here. And it's pointed towards port 80, which is going to be serving the file over HTTP. And this extra directory at the end is redundant. So we're going to point that to slash web slash submit dot PHP, which is going to be the file that's handling our requests. So I'm going to go ahead and save this file real quick and compile it to make sure that everything works. And we can see that it compiled successfully. So I'm going to go ahead and upload the code. But before we do that, there's a few things you're going to need to do. I'm going to head over to tools to make sure that I have the right board selected and that I have the right port set up. So heading over to tools, you can see that I've selected Lolan D1 Mini, which is the specific board carrier that I have for this ESP8266. And if you don't already have the plugin for the ESP8266 set up on your Arduino IDE, you can go ahead and do that by just simply heading over to File, Preferences, and copying in this address. After that, close the window and head over to Boards, Board Manager, and search for ESP8266. After we've installed this package, you should be good to go and we can upload the code. Now we can see that the code is flashing and it's successfully uploaded. Okay, so if I head over to a serial monitor of this board, which will allow me to read out which processes it's currently running, I can just do Control Shift M to pull up that monitor at 9600 baud, which is what I have it set to. And I'm gonna go ahead and restart the chip. And you can see it started to connect to our Wi-Fi network based off the credentials we plugged in. So we got a response code of 200, which is good. And it shows that it's successfully connected to the network. So if I head over to this page, back to the remote ESP bug, we should see a change of data in here relatively soon, assuming that everything is up and running. Since the ESP8266 only has one onboard antenna, it has to pause intermittently every so often to push data to the web server. The way it works is it will collect data for about 30 seconds or so, or whatever threshold you choose to set in the code. And after that, it'll create a, pro a post request to this website where it'll upload new data that it's found. So here you can see about every 30 seconds, you're going to get another connecting again output, which indicates that it's restarted and pushed the data to this web, web interface. So if we just wait for a little, this page should refresh. And there you can see that a new stream of data has come in with devices that are in the area. The interface is partitioned into three sections showing known devices, clients, and networks, and basically shows you a full range of devices that are nearby in the area. Clients will be devices that are connected or associated with a network, so these can be devices like phones, laptops, or other things, and networks, of course, will just be the standalone network, which these things are connected to. Another feature of the ESP bug is you can also get the manufacturer readout under this this little column here, which shows you, assuming that it's saved in the known MAC address file, which sort of device is connected to your network. So here you can see, for instance, I have this Google device, which may be a Google phone. Oh, and now it's out of range, so it's disappeared. But you can see here we have like this Intel device, um, a few unknown ones, and see other manufacturers like Belkin or Netgear for these ones. So this will help you pinpoint sort of which device you would want to be looking for, assuming that you know the manufacturer. Or if you know specifically the MAC address of the device that you want to pin down, you can just copy it from clients over here. And we can go over to settings to register a new known device. So under BSSID, which is the same thing as the MAC address, I can go ahead and paste that address. And we can set it as a new device. So for instance, I'm going to name this one Spooky and it's saved and updated to our table. So if we head back to the scanner, if that device is picked up successfully, yes, we will see it up here under known devices. And here we can see that it's successfully registered two devices that were noted under the known MAC address list. This is potentially useful for a scenario, say, where you want to monitor whether or not someone you know is coming in and out of the area, or if you want to check in remotely to see 
What known devices have stopped by? There are some shortcomings to the ESP bug and its capability to monitor Wi-Fi, which you can potentially protect yourself against if you take the right preventative measures. For instance, enabling Mac randomization on your smartphone would allow you to essentially shield yourself from devices like this, which cache your hardware address. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And you can also hit me up on Twitter at Alex Lind if you have any questions. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and pen test products at hack5.org.